Now, four years after the Ethiopian Airlines 737 MAX crash, Boeing is now in court and they have to deal with families of the victims from that crash. And what they're trying to make sure they figure out is how to avoid extensive punishment for it. Let's get into some of the details of what happened on that flight before we get into what they're trying to argue in court to get out of it. Again, a big airline. Ethiopian Airlines flight 302 crashed six minutes after takeoff back in March of 2019. 157 people were on board though, and all of them sadly passed away. The crash was due to a sensor malfunction, which caused an automatic software program to override the pilots and point the plane's nose down. It sounds terrifying, keep that in mind if you're actually involved with this. So according to Common Dreams, Boeing added those sensors and software to that 737 MAX model, because it was a rushed and unstable design. And by the way, also under Bush, Obama and the Trump administrations, the FAA let airlines certify more of their own safety precautions. And we know how that works. Once you let companies, huge ones, regulate themselves, they tend to not really regulate themselves. So this is what's going on in this lawsuit. With some of these lawsuits filed by relatives of the 80 victims of the Ethiopian Airlines flight set for trial in June, Boeing is asking for a federal judge to limit what jurists can consider when they determine how much the company has to pay in compensatory damages here. And in a recent court filing, Boeing attorneys cited an expert who said that the 737 MAX victims here died painlessly because the airplane crashed into the ground so fast that their brains didn't have time to process the pain signals from their nervous systems. Their attorneys also argue that under Illinois law, if there's not enough evidence that passengers suffered pain and suffering in between their injury and their ultimate death, the aerospace company should only be responsible to pay grief and loss of damage to the victims' families. And as we would probably, as you guys could figure, the reason they're trying to lessen the brunt of this is because they don't want to pay more money. At stake are potentially millions of dollars per plaintiff. People familiar with these proceedings say it could come from you know, millions. Who knows, because they've got a lot of money and this was based off of them not following, I guess, the rules that they made sure they paid off politicians to tell them not to follow. They also argued if jurors felt empathy for these victims, that it would be also bad for them as well. So it's not just about the pain and suffering that they don't care about, but it's also about we can't let these humans in this jury get any human emotions going here and then rule in that favor. Jurors would inevitably sympathize with testimony about the passengers alleged alleged fear of impending death and imagine themselves in the passenger's shoes is what they then pointed out. So you guys imagine the situation. First off, you've got you know your family member, whoever it is. Maybe we shouldn't imagine it because it's terrifying to think about going in this particular situation. And then when you're looking for recourse from it, or at least legally for them to pay, then they're like, let's find ways to make sure that we talk about how your family member had no fear in the middle of this devastating and terrifying incident. There's a reason why people have a fear of flying, you guys. They filed or they settled 75% of these cases mm-hmm. Boeing did. And I understand that it's a, it's a lawyer's job to rep their client vigorously um, without fear. But this is too much. If there's a family out there who did settle but hasn't officially signed off, take it back. I, we shouldn't be telling families what to do, but if it's me, I have to go the distance and never shut up about it. You actually, because we know how it works, the client is the one that signs off on the strategy here. And they actually allowed sick people to go into court and argue this disgustingness. They actually said this was not too much. And I understand in a free society, we're supposed to kind of kind of get around things and say, hey, we're not gonna allow this, this is too much. But that's not happening. The line and the goalpost keeps getting moved. And people keep saying, well, that's all right, let's do more, go for it, push it. This is too much, it's just too much. It's becoming a new normal is what they're mm-hmm. trying to also do, Rick. Um. I'll take it a step further and piggyback off that. Like they, this is a ghoulish way of um, trying to make a case, and it is very bad. Um, I would say it's torturous. Um, If I were to, as Jr. said, try to put myself in uh, the victim's shoes, the victim's family's shoes. Um, How what I will say is, 
when is enough enough in a capitalist society where one company acquires another for $12 billion, I think it was when Boeing purchased McDonnell or McCowell Airlines. Yeah, McDonnell Douglas, right? Thank you. Mm-hmm. And um, so then their planes became massive, right? And then they also loosened regulations. This is so they keep their stock prices high and they continue to cash out at every single turn. This is the society that we are in. It's the same reason why you are not seeing complete overhauls of infrastructure after East Palestine. It is corruption out in the open where companies like this really don't get really don't get dealt that big of a blow when it comes to literal death. And now they are arguing within the window between when someone took off and died on one of their planes. If that person feared for their life, that's where we're at right now, mm-hmm. really? One other quick note, and then I'll throw it back to JR. Um, being from the state of Illinois, uh, Boeing was headquartered in Illinois. I, I'm The court case is taking place in Illinois. Um, I'm really curious to see how this plays out. And I'm curious to see if this argument sticks. Should it to us? No, legally do they have a case? Maybe, maybe. morally, there is no case whatsoever. Um, they, uh, a very, very last thing, um, there were two crashes, right? Uh, the first one that occurred years back, they also blamed anything but themselves. For the automated system, they blamed, this is them, foreign pilots, the mm-hmm. reason for the crash. So they will always, at every turn, blame anyone but themselves. And uh, will not uh, will not blame themselves in order to keep the highest stock price possible. And that's the bottom line with how these things go in a capitalistic society like this, where uh, you know this you talk about morality, the soulless nature of what you're supposed to do. We don't expect anything different. And in fact, if it was, people would start going, well, we have to be careful because then people might mm-hmm. start asking mm-hmm. for uh, actual. Uh, compensation and actual consequences for companies to do these things. Or maybe like, oh, what if they go out of business though? Yo, that's not my problem. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.